this one bringing space within everyone's reach right this is what was in the headline and you can see here going to space shouldn't be the hardest part and now this is the rocket normally we have been talking about PSLV polar satellite launch vehicle GSLV but now private companies are coming up you can say this is our SpaceX like this is India's SpaceX you know SpaceX Elon Musk this is our SpaceX same to them SpaceX has built the rocket so now this has been done and you can see here what is given here 300 kilogram to orbit around 700 kilometer high that Agni Ban can access both low and high inclination orbit and design from that one now see here doesn't fly with the same number of engines very small one see here how many engines go into that they're given there facts and figures configuration ready to launch so this is what they have been doing that is a very lightweight uh, see what you see the body of the material they're using composite carbon composite lightweight and another technology what they use 3d printer to print and assemble it see that's what the nanotechnology will not be always written in the current affairs but then when you are reading then you are imagining what exactly the application is all about right so that is what the comes into that and then i have said cubesat we have a another space company right uh, which has made a headline kalam set was built by that space kids india you know they have come up with ajadi set ajadi set right what is ajadi set hmm what is ajadi set this is the another company and it is by a woman Srimati she is the CEO and they built Ajadi set 75 years of India's independence a satellite made by 750 girls from 75 schools all over India they built a satellite called Ajadi set when we celebrated 75 years of India's independence two years back what was there now you can see here this one astronomy and all is given here so if you come across this one Kalam site also they have built school children what I've said cube set very small satellite that is a Kalam site so Kalam site was developed by them and you'll find here this is a lady she's the part of this and this boy what do you see here his name is Saruk, not Saruk Khan. He is another Saruk. He is a Saruk of space technology. Right? This boy has built Kalam Sat, small satellite. And that was launched by ISRO, ISRO. Right? So nanotechnology has come into application. We are using now nanotechnology. And you will see here Space Kids India, you can find that. See this all this they have the vision there and they have the tie up there. But what is very important, what you see here, this is the team which built Kalam set in honor of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So that's what I'm trying to bring here. So nanotechnology, when you come across, it could have various applications. I'll give you another example here. Fighter jet. And you know the example. Is made of carbon composite material can you give me the example which is that fighter jet of india which is made of carbon composite material is a lightweight tejas lca tejas and which is the name of the company indian company light combat aircraft tejas hal hindustan aeronautics limited right has built a lightweight fighter jet you all know about Tejas light combat aircraft see MiG MiG and Sukhoi are from Russia Rafale is from France but Tejas is our own fighter jet why it is a lightweight because of the body of the fighter jet so we are using nanotechnology remember that our scientific organization like DRDO ISRO 
Bark, all they are using nanotechnology. Nanotechnology has already come into application part. So that is, a, you have to read current affairs, but you have to think beyond current affairs. UPSC can give you any kind of example from anywhere. Can ask you in the question paper. The lightweight materials. Now let me give you one more example here. Is another very good important example that you provide here. You can write the sixth one. Nano filter. Nano filter. Which can filter water. So where we can use nano filter? Let's say here for, was this one. Waste water treatment. Today we are using it. There's something called membrane, you know, nano membrane. Nano membrane. What do you mean by nano membrane? Pore, you know, pore size. Through which the liquid pass, water pass, will be what size? Nano. So anything bigger, anything bigger will not pass through. Right? There they use. I'll give another example here. Water purification device. Tata company has in home, you know, RO, one is what? RO, RO, UV. Now, nano filter has come. Tata, this uh, nano filter, this uh, water uh, purification. You know, home. And when you look at advertisement, ad, they'll say that nano filter which will give clean water, no bacteria, no virus. What is RO? See, RO is different technology. What is RO? Reverse osmosis. That's a different concept. And why we use UV light there in our home? Why use UV light? Ultraviolet? Germs. They'll kill the germs. And what is the use of nanofilter? It will block all those kind of particles. So we are totally, you know, safe to drink water. Right? Is what we can drink there. So again, the nanotechnology application. One more example. See, I can give you hundreds of examples. Nano fabric. Nano fabric. Now this is making headline. Nano fabric is making headlines. Now what is nano fabric? It is basically smart textile. Right? Smart textile. Now let me ask. Today, whatever we wear is made of what? Cotton, silk, and sometimes you have mix also. Right? Sometimes you know in the polyester and all this mixed type, mixed type, sari, you know, sari, and all this one, shirt, everything is there. Right? Now the nano fabrics have come. You know what is nano fabrics? No dust, no stain. I'll just use a very, very important word. You have seen the lotus lotus leaves and have you seen the water it will not wet the leaf of the lotus I write in the bracket here it has got something called lotus effect what is lotus effect that it will not wet you know we have to in a raincoat we, we wear the raincoat when there's heavy rain right umbrella or raincoat we wear imagine those kind of dress you don't have to worry simply wear the shirt and all your dress Bindas in Paris, and the moment you reach that uh, place, just simply and you're ready for a party. Umbrella le jane ka jarwati nahi hai, right? Kewal kya saap karna hoga bal ko, gila bal, chehra wagera, baaki sara safe hai. All things are safe there. No water will be collected there. And again, what is very important? You buy once, wear it for one month. Buy once, wear months. That kind of a slogan will be there in future. Ek bar khardo, pehante roho. Saap karne ka jaro dini. You don't have to clean. That is what is giving. Now I am coming to another very important thing application. You know what? Self-healing polymer. Self-healing polymer. There is another very important application is coming up. Self-healing. 
polymers. What do you mean by this one? Self healing polymers. It will repair itself. Right? Like for example, this mobile phone. If it falls, you know the screen get damaged. And you have to change the screen. Laptop if this break. But now imagine in future the this uh, repair itself. And it has been developed. So I'll tell you here, there is here, there is basically nanomaterials capable of repairing fault, fault or crack, any kind of defect. So where we can use this one, A very important application is pipeline, you know oil and gas pipeline industrial use right? because industrial risky could be there you know sometimes storage tank so let's say for example i'll write it here where we can use an industrial area for example storage tank where we use liquid or let's say pipeline because there's always a risk if there's any fault or something that will affect the part of it see mobile phone and laptop and our day-to-day -day use will be there but normally it will find industrial application where it is used industries again the scientists have developed those kind of polymers right so those things are there just like you know you know that um, very important thing they grow it like you know that um, lizard you have seen lizard once they, they this tail again they grow the tail this is what the materials is there right they, that way they can uh, grow it Again, these all are developed at lab level, where laboratory, lab may be made. They have been developed by scientists, right? Okay, these are multiple application comes. Now tell me what are negative impact of nanotechnology? We can use nanotechnology various ways, right? So what are the negative impact? Now tell me. This is where I have given into that. This I was uh, discussing here, right? Uh, this is what I have given here. Graphene I have mentioned that. I'll just make it there. Those who are this I was discussing in the classroom, right? We have gone into those kind of application here. So yes, uh, tell me here application part. A uh, negative impact. Yes, you all are aware of that. UPC has asked question also there. UPC has asked question also there. So what are the negative aspect of it? Just briefly tell me. I'll make a flow chart here. I'll just make a flow chart. Negative aspects of nano science and technology. Let's uh, look into this one. Now tell me one by one. What are negative impacts? One is the health. Well, how the health impact? If nanoparticle enter the body, it may trigger some kind of side effect. Now this is making a lot of news. Now let me connect with environment. Nanoplastic. You know, microplastic. Now it is making the headline nanoplastic, and nano we cannot see with naked eyes. Recently, it has come in the news. See, nanoplastic. Imagine that the same plastic. Just imagine this uh, bottle. What we are using is made of plastic. Is a plastic product, right? So, is a chemical. Plastic is what chemical. So when we use the water for a long time, so what happens? These chemicals get dissolved in the water. And sometimes this plastic will break into microplastic. But now you imagine it becomes a nanoplastic. That, that is dispersed in the water. So when you drink the water, what will happen? Through lungs, it will enter the capillary, blood capillary. And will damage liver, kidney, organs. Or body organs will be damaged. This is what is the risk is there. Right? It's very dangerous there. So that is what I have given example, right? Uh, entering bloodstream. I'll give you another example, which was UPC has asked magnetite particles. Magnetite particle. What do you mean by magnetite particle? Iron, Fe. You know iron. And today we use number of uh, metallic alloys of iron. I'll give you a very good example. You know, uh, in vehicle we have 
brick. Brick shoe is there. Now that because of heat and friction, you know friction can generate a magnetite particle. Sometimes you know the power grid, the wire is there. You have seen the wire there. When it is heated up in friction, it can generate magnetite particle. Very dangerous. If it goes inside the human body, it can even result into cancer. That is going to be future. As we will use more nanotechnology product, we will be facing this kind of problem there. So here, particle there, from metallic products made of iron made of iron metallic product made of iron that can cause problem now now let's look at here another is what environment environment now tell me environment how is you have read in environment tell me what is that word called as biomagnification bioaccumulation so not only human being but other animals and plants will be affected because of nanoparticles so i'll write two things here first thing here is the pollution pollution of soil water air just like today we talk about a biomedical waste solid waste garbage right we were talking about electronic waste electronics so the nano waste and they are very dangerous why they can be carried away to long distance they can go from one part to another why they are very small size see if this is a garbage so you know this is a bigger size it will not easily go to long distance but now imagine if it is something very small it can be carried by wind water hundreds of kilometers so that is another problem is there so they are easily you can say easily transportable to long distance and what is another thing if they enter the food chain what is the word here food chain it will magnify concentration will increase that is here bio magnification bio magnification in food chain So even the herbivores, carnivores, other organisms, they will also get affected. Right? They will get also affected there. That's what comes here. I'll write it, keep it here. Right? That's what can happen there. Now tell me third third negative impact. Security. How the security will be impacted by nanotechnology? When we use nanotechnology, how? security will be compromised sensor this nano sensor today mobile phone laptop we have a inside sensor but now embedded sensor you know that now there is a cyber security problem have you ever realized that once you are talking then after some time you get calls sometimes you get ad you see that phone is listening phone also hears and in fact I'm saying it is whatever I'm talking you like talking right now what I'm teaching right now now when I'll go to my mobile phone I'll start getting all nanotechnology here this phone is understanding that nanotechnology is going on there but imagine some sensor is there which can collect all data you know it can collect all data and cyber criminal hackers get an access to data you know that's what uh, is very very important that whatever things we have today it is not manufactured in india where they are manufactured china outside we don't know what is embedded here what is embedded inside we don't know right so that's what now we want our own kind of manufacturing of electronic products where we can apply our own indian laws to protect everything about the mobile phone or the device Today we have TV channels and TV panel. Too. What about the TV panel has a sensor which is basically having all things about our home. So there can be a problem of privacy, data privacy. Right? So there nano sensor, then again you can see nano camera. So this will create what? 
one is this one data security and data privacy that may get compromised and now particularly you know security kind of thing let let's say government government database government devices that get compromised right another thing here which is very very important nano weapons use of nano weapons what is nano weapon where we made of nano particles lethal right which we cannot see i'll give you a very good example bio weapon what is bio weapon made up of biological weapon viruses even bacteria also there see today nuclear weapon nuclear bomb atom bomb terrorist organization or any anti national group cannot make it why because the technology is very advanced what do you require for atom bomb or something uranium plutonium then you have to develop those kind of a device you require enrichment all these facilities are required so which is a very costly and again what government does government control everything right from mining right from mining of uranium till fabrication till the rod weapons government controls so nuclear will be very difficult to get into wrong hands chemical weapon you know chemical like you know phosgene mustard gas agent orange right stearin all these chemicals but sometimes you know chemical weapons have been used by such groups right but biological weapon one can easily make tell me how it can be easily made virus is virus bacteria is where in the nature around us imagine a person in the lab take that virus develop and make a weapon what you've seen in the movies right and let's a crowded place even we will not hear any sound but what will happen all of us will get infected with the virus and then we will carry virus to others covid right covid you know that one of the suspicion was that wuhan a lab in the wuhan there is artificially made virus sars cov 19 right one of the theories says that na ki that leakage that leakage happened from the lab and then you know worldwide global pandemic so that that risk could be there i'll give you another good example if one has to make there food poisoning you know food poisoning sometime food poisoning bacteria just take where the food poisoning is there you culture in the lab make that one and add into water tank entire area in the hospital can it be done in the water tank you know add those kind of bacteria so that is what the risk is there right now tell me another one what will be another negative impact another negative impact i have given already three three impacts i have given ethical which you can connect in the mains exam ethical issues with nanotechnology now tell me what is ethics although we are preparing for prelims exam but i am asking a question what is ethics naitikta what do you say in telugu naitikta telugu this ethics which word is that naitik ha huh. naitik is the name of my son but is never naitik right <laughs> ethics right oh yes yes what is naitik tell me what is ethics you have read ethics na in the class what does that mean right or wrong right moral code of conduct sometimes we have professional ethics what is professional ethics not to keep harm anybody like you know advocate doctors they have ethical practices ethical conduct every profession teacher also has ethical conduct right all this that comes into that now now connect this ethics with nanotechnology there we talk about science and technology how it comes causing harm any harm to anybody that is unethical say today let's say a company a company makes a nanotechnology product which is harmful and does not disclose and let's say tomorrow we go to the market buy that product and use it we buy the product and use it 
and then we have some kind of illness problem so again the ethical question comes there today you know that we have a body in a fssi food safety standard authority of india which do the labeling okay, this is the ingredient so we as a consumer decide whether we want to eat or we don't want to eat same will happen with nanotechnology okay, whether we want to use nanotechnology product or we don't want to use it again these things will come again what comes here causing harm to whom one is that nature and second is what this one animals and plants living organisms and we can also include here humans any kind of harm sometime environmental ethics also comes into that right so those practices will be evolved with time so why i gave you this one what i said in the beginning of the class there is no difference between mains exam and the pre exam you could get question from anywhere you basically can ask question from anywhere all right one area i have come to nanotechnology now whatever comes in current affairs regarding nanotechnology you have to read that and that there the upsc can ask question right if let's say upsc exam science and technology class uh, exam, questions if you are able to solve around 8 to 10 you will have a lot of advantage with your other competitors all right now i'll come to another area which is again very very important robotics robots and i'll connect with current affairs so one area nanotechnology then application part comes into that now nano robotics here then i'll go to current affairs but let me first understand what is robotics key point what is called here key points main points so who will tell me about robotics we have a very famous person chitti endran right thalavia rajnikanth a great actor rajnikanth you have seen the movie shankar's movie and there was 2.0 where you have pakshi rajan akshay kumar right and chitti that were there so even the movies are inspired from robotics right and robotics is making headline 100% you will get question in the exam and we'll see there we'll see the ai we'll come to the ai part but tell me what is robotics simple definition what is robotics simple definition give me there how do you define robotics hmm? yes definition of robotics simple definition one sentence automation of yes machines all right simply is that what is robotics robotics is where we use program machine what machine program machine it could be 100% autonomous even it could be controlled also we can control the device right so here basically it is a use of program machine where the software is there software which help their program machine to execute one is this one human tasks and other applications right now when you talk about robot or robotics here is basically combination of this area one is mechanical engineering why mechanical engineering comes because of the machine you are developing the machine there second area which comes here that is a electronics why electronics comes into robotics because of the sensor electronic system sensor all these are there hard drive and third area which is very important computer science computer science and engineering because that machine is programmed there is a software which help that machine to work so these are three areas of science and technology engineering come into the field of robotics this is also called mechatronics what is the word here called mechatronics there is a there is a branch which comes into now today robotics is considered to be separate branch and you will now see that you no know, normally btech no btech mtech degree now they are getting this specialized this study of thing there even you know now that ai you have separate for ai 
even big data all these are coming machine learning deep learning all these are coming there so what will happen over the future we'll have engineers not mechanical engineer or civil engineer they'll say that i am a robotic engineer those type of people will be there in the market right this is what is evolving here now what is third thing here about the robots there as i said here it can be semi autonomous as well as fully autonomous completely it can work no human control the machine itself can work with the program we don't have to control it but sometimes we need to control we have semi autonomous now tell me where mostly the use of robots are there industries industrial application right so i'll connect with all this one here so we can write here so if you take here application part so i'll write it down here fourth one is that applications or robotics the first is industry manufacturing industry there's something called assembly so when you visit uh, genome valley genome valley we have a number of pharma companies all those medicines packing right labeling then you know heavy industry automobile car car making they assemble it again they use robots right the so first application comes here second which you are aware there medical science now you know everywhere even hyderabad has got this one surgery i'll give you example kidney stone sometime you know eye eye surgeon may use such kind of robotic there so even even heart right there the robotics have been used and they are trained surgeon they are very trained surgeon which carry out those kind of robotic device but that is a semi autonomous is controlled by doctors they are not fully autonomous then what comes here third one which you are again aware security defense can you give me example of defense and security part robotic application you know getting all this one give me any one example in defense use of robotic a remotely operated vehicle rov remotely operated vehicle now let me give you example from drdo rov drdo has built one rov to defuse bomb daksh what is the name here daksh d a k s h daksh daksh is a robot which can defuse bomb you know normal bombs which are planted ducks can identify a bomb and defuse it normally you know whenever we have bomb live bomb to so be call what bomb squad right the which uh, look into that area ki kaun sa wire cut hai red or blue right <laughs> that one is the risk of that now nothing to worry ducks will go and do that kind of defusion and ducks can be controlled see ducks is manually controlled there is a system which can control ducks up to 500 meters half kilometer ducks can be controlled see when the bomb blast ducks will be gone not that person right so the ducks has been developed there so this is basically you can write bomb bomb diffusing here bomb diffusal so let me take upward here is a bomb diffusal here can you give me any other example of uh, defense robotic comes and connect with current affairs that's what i'm saying you have to always connect with one example one is daksh you are aware of it unmanned aerial vehicles drone very good example drones whatever drone we have you know drone attack is all flown na the drone goes there with the weapon 
right america is using this one attack drone attack now india is also getting prepared with all the drone technology and again drdo drdo has a lab in hyderabad hyderabad is a place which is known for many multiple scientific institution we have isro we have drdo we have bark we have everything here even to biotechnology we have there right so hyderabad is such a very important place is there so drone can sometimes drone can be simply autonomous can detect the target and destroy the target that is a defense application even you know um, i'll give you one example drdo has developed a battlefield tank you know tank muntra you also write here muntra is a tank normally you know tank is uh, driven by a person have you seen the battlefield tank which is the that main battlefield tank of india arjuna you know arjun arjun mbt arjun what is called main battlefield tank arjuna have you seen the tank they are big size sometimes you know uh, your museum where you have kept this tank and people go there and take a selfie and photograph this is a battlefield tank so those tank if you look at arjuna has got four persons inside one will be a driver who will drive the tank he has a night vision also then another one will be a person just at the gunner you just see that they will have with a gun also there they also carry a gun like a rifle another one will be the person who load the main barrel you know there is a barrel which fire that tank so there is another person will operate that barrel and the fourth person will be at the back with a radio antenna he will be intercepting ki where the enemies are there but what is muntra no human it doesn't require any human that means it will just go without human in the battlefield so there is no risk even the enemy destroy this muntra no human casualty human being will not be killed so it is said that in future war machine will play a role what you have seen in the science fiction movie robotic soldiers imagine you have robotic soldiers and it is now this being done i'll tell you that china china has developed very now let me give you current example a dog recently it was in the news have you do you know this no this is where the china has uh, been doing this it was all in the news there robotic dog this china has uh, developed ibo this one ibo robot dogs now there is something different there now here buddhist funeral land that is not there china it was recently in the news there chinese robotic dogs shoot like a pro imagine that dog in the battlefield and china is uh, very strong in manufacturing imagine that china deployed such hundreds of dogs robotic dogs it is going to be very dangerous for indian army for indian army it will be very big threat and you can see here what is given here robot dogs can outperform skilled shooters this is what the china has developed again see when see when you are looking at a subject a topic robot then you connect with the current affairs application so let's say here this 3 weeks ago 4 weeks ago now again see china's robotic dog can shoot like a pro says report right is all given here i'll i'll play here this one see we'll just see this one this was this is the one and what is you can see it can climb such kind of area you see this is a kind of event fence also military use
98 percent of the target they can kill. Suppose they carry the gun, so 98 percent they will be hitting the target. Right? Even U.S. military is now thinking of this. Now this type of dog will be having sensor, will be able to detect humans. But again the question was raised that this type of uh, robotic dogs can be even dangerous to the innocent people. See how that technology will know that that person is an enemy or is a friend. Is just trained to kill the human. So that is where the things are coming there. This is what I just played here that you have to be aware of this. This kind of military aspect of there. Future warfare. Now I am coming to another one here. Now tell me what is another fourth application. There are a lot of applications are there. Hmm? Space one. Can you give me example? Now give me example. Yes, very good. Very good. The example comes Vyom Mitra. Vyom Mitra is going to be the part of Gaganyan mission. India's Gaganyan mission will have a Vyom Mitra. But remember that Vyom Mitra is a AI based robot. Semi, that means a half. It's not a complete humanoid. What is something called? Humanoid. Human like robot. It's just the half. Torso, not the lower part. And this Vyom Mitra will assist our Indian astronauts. Right? Uh, during the Gaganyan mission there. Crew mission. And that has been there in the news for the last 4-5 years. Vyom Mitra. Right? So Vyom Mitra, I'll just take it up for Vyom Mitra, Gaganyan mission. Right? I'll give you another example here. See, when you talk about here, um, I'll give you one more area here. Just one second. I'll let me give another one here. You are aware of this. Which mission? Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 2nd, Chandrayaan 3. Vikram lander and Pargyan rover. See, rover, again, remember what is rover? It's a build, six build. It moves on the surface of the moon. But you know, uh, NASA, American Space Agency, NASA, have deployed many rover over Mars, Red Planet, Curiosity, Perseverance. All these are rover of NASA on the Mars, Red Planet. So they are again, they, they are controlled from the ground. So this is again the part of the robotic device. Then, then you know this one, fifth one. I'll give you a very good example, which you have to know, this humanoid. See, humanoid will have many applications there. What is humanoid? Human-like robot. Right? They are AI powered. Artificial intelligence powered. Human like robot. See very soon. See as you said. No, technology goes through that kind of advancement. When it becomes a part of application of society. See 20-30 years back. It was just only in movies. We were seeing only in movies there. Such kind of a human like robot. But today it has come to the market. What will happen the next 10 years? They will be around us. Imagine book, Vikas Book Center. That robot. Which book? Lakshmi Kant. We'll instruct the person. Lakshmi Kant. Or we'll feed it. Second row, third row. Tiranga Book House. Imagine that. I have my personal assistant as a robot here. Who will open my laptop, do all the work. This is the future. And these robots have been now ready. And I'll give you one very good example of a robot which is widely used worldwide. Now. Here the example is now. Is prepared is made by SoftBank Robotics. SoftBank Robotics. Now. Is a widely used robot. See, it can walk, it can walk, it can run, it can do all tasks what humans do. Right? Now robot there. Then I'll give you, Indian company has developed, Mitra. Mitra. Mitra, you know, friend. Mitra. Mitra is by Indian company called Invento Robotics. Invento Robotics. This is the name of the company, Indian company, which has built Mitra. Long way back, uh, when Donald Trump was uh, America's president, 
So Donald Trump's daughter Ivanka, Ivanka Trump came to Hyderabad. At that time, PM Modi and Ivanka Trump was, you know, um, greeted by Mitra. There was a conference in Hyderabad. That time, Mitra came in the news. Today, HDFC Bank, you know, HDFC Bank. Then you know this Apollo Hospital Max. They they have used uh, Mitra during the time of COVID. Simple example, you know, scanner. You know scanner. So a scanner with the mitra in the entry gate to scan the person, thermal thermal scanner and everything. That where the robot was used. So again, this making. Then you know, I should not mention that you all know Sophia. Sophia is now a household name. Right? Sophia is now a household name. So which company has developed Sophia? You know, you know this one, Hansen Robotics. Hansen is a Hong Kong based company. Hansen Robotics. Hansen is the name of the person, scientist, who built a Sophia. And why it, first time it came in the news? It is the first robot in the world to get citizenship. Of which country? Which country has given citizenship? UAE. Right? As a robot, just go Nagrikta Mila, citizenship Mila. Normally, we give citizenship to the people, but the robot has got this one. Is it UAE, Dubai, or Saudi Arabia? I think Saudi Arabia is there. Saudi has given that citizenship, Saudi Arabia, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. They, they give this uh, part of and uh, she can talk, can, and she's totally powered by AI. Everything like a human, right? Programmed with that. And what does the AI help? AI help in learning. So Sophia is learning from the environment. She has been part of many uh, conference seminars. They're part. Then how many of you know this Ida? Ida. Ida. Any idea? Ida is a first robot which can do the painting. Is a painter and sculpture. Cam this you know Oxford. University of Oxford. It is the first robot of the world which is a painter. It can paint just like, just like M.F. Hussain, you know, Makbul Fida Hussain, M.F. Hussain can paint the kind of thing there, right? Even she can make the sculpture, you know, statue and sculpture. That is what Ida can do. So, a lot of such robots are coming up. Right? So, robots can find multiple applications. Right? In a day-to-day -day life, you can say there could be many times, many things can be used there. Alright, so what I'll do here, I have covered this part. Let me go to the third part, AI.